What is up, everybody, and welcome to the list. I take plays from the Denver Nuggets that I found interesting and share them with you. We're going to go over game two of the NBA Finals, and let's start with uh, Kevin Love starting. He's guarding Aaron Gordon, and Denver tried out a few 5-4 pick and rolls, which usually work for them. One, first of all, you get your three best uh, shooters not on ball, so you're spacing the court. And this was one of the very first plays of the game. You see how easy it should work. Jokic gets by. Uh, you, you get the screen here. He gets uh, out of bio just a little bit, and he gets all the way to the rim. Smokes the layup. They actually ran this, I think, five times in game one and only scored on it once on this time. But they got good looks out of it every single time. I think it's something that they can shore up. Some of this is I think Aaron Gordon wasn't always quite sure where to get the screen. That lower angle is the best way because then you can attack and draw Kevin Love towards you. And Jokic knows he's got to stop. He can't just go right through him. He's got to stop and get that little bunny. But he's good at it. That 5-4 pick and roll action against them, it's one great way to try to score when they're in man-to-man -man coverage. And then the real story of game one was messing up switches. You're going to see Michael Porter on this one. Just a simple double pin down. These guys got to talk. And Michael Porter's got to be a little bit more ready to jump out. See the hesitation on it? That little bit of hesitation is enough to get their shooters going. He wasn't the only one, though. You got these uh, mess-ups all throughout the team. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, here Murray stunts at the ball. They don't know if they're going to switch. Jimmy does a good job of slipping this, like screen and then slip. So it makes it confusing. Both guys jump, jump back, and then you give up the wide-open jumper here. It's just communication. Miami smart. Michael Porter said that they're listening to the call. When they say switch, they're slipping quickly. It shouldn't matter. You should still be able to switch. Again, both guys jump out at the ball. This is on Michael Porter. Even if you call a switch, it shouldn't matter. You should be able to, as soon as you say switch, you got to understand that the exchanges happen and get to the corner. Nobody goes and you give the best shooter on their team a wide open corner three in front of his bench. Denver just absolutely getting killed on these. Again, the defense shouldn't be able to read it this quickly. Aaron Gordon's effort on that one, if we rewind it, just the sense of urgency needed to make sure you stop these wasn't there. Like, all right, kind of jog. up. Oh, nope, you gave the perfect shooter another corner three option. Everything's got to be tighter, more urgent. Got another example here. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So I like this one because it's a three-person screen. They run a lot of these. So they're using four people in action, and it can be confusing. So the first one, a little... Screen, like he's screening KCP and then running off the double screen. KCP is going to stay with the shooter, so he's going to fight through it. But now Kevin Love's man is icing the screen, trying to take away this angle. Murray, I believe, needs to switch. They need to communicate this, but I think Murray needs to switch out onto that. And so you can see that Michael Porter is clearly expecting it. Murray sags off and gives a wide open shot to Kevin Love. Again, credit them. They have some confusing actions. But Denver needs to be more dialed in to the various types of actions and reads they make out of them. And then this was the famous Christian Brown one. You get a pin down here. Both guys jump out at the ball. Are they supposed to switch? They're unclear. Again, wide open sh shot for a, a good three-point shooter. And then they run the same action. And I think they got together after the play. And I think they made the wrong conclusion that Bruce Brown saying, I'm just going to stick on my guy. You just chase. And when you do that, again, Miami immediately adjusts knowing they're going to be able to sneak this pass into the middle. So once again, they know how Denver changes their coverage and they know exactly how to attack it. Um, I thought Denver played to the officials a little bit too much in this game. You're going to see, I believe on this first one, you get Jamal Murray gets hit in the face. And then we can speed it up a little bit here. Actually, right, it's about right here. You're going to see Jamal Murray gets hit in the face and he just stops playing. Oh, and he looks at their official and he goes, what happened, man? And he gives up a shot. This is the finals. You can't you can't be expecting every call, and you can't let every non-call give up a wide open shot. Here was a good example. We got to speed this one up a lot. You're gonna see KCP coming through the side here. He tries to flop a little push, doesn't get the call, gets up, and then frustrated by it, slaps at the ball. This is the worst foul a veteran can make. 0 0.7 seconds on the clock. A shooter at the logo, and you reach in for a foul. Again, I think it was just a little bit of frustration because he didn't get the call, and you see he points, and it just makes you make a horrible play. That was almost certainly a missed shot by the Miami Heat. Instead, you give him three free throws. And then there was just regular bad effort on defense from a handful of different guys. Let's take a look at some of these examples here. Oh, yeah, this is 
Michael Porter on the weak side, you can see he makes a non-real effort. So he comes down to tag the roller, but he's got to be ready to run out on a great shooter. Instead, he tries to steal this pass. He has no chance at getting. Runs the wrong direction and then gives up the three. Doesn't have you know didn't didn't get penalized on that one because they missed. But that's a wide open three you generate from a false slash bad effort. Then you see Jokic here at the rim. That pass comes so high, empty corner, but it's Cody Zeller. You got to be able to take away the angle. Instead, he just kind of jumps, gives a wide open layup. You got to make it harder than that. Oh, my, here you got a great defensive possession that goes to the post. All you got to do is keep an eye now on Jimmy. He's sneaking behind you. And what happens? He gets the offensive rebound, and it's a three pointer. This is, shouldn't happen. There's no need. It's the NBA Finals. Who wants it more? Let's take a look at this one here. Oh, this is Duncan Robinson beating Jamal Murray on a straight line drive. I mean, this one this should be embarrassing. I'm sure this one came up in the film study, but you get a closeout on a guy who doesn't drive. He's not a quick guy, He's, but just lazy on your heels defense, and you give up an and one drive. To Duncan Robinson, absolute killer. Again, Miami shouldn't be able to score at the, with with Denver unless you give them some so many mistakes. And then this coverage here, I thought, you know, Bam did a better job as the game went on. You're going to see it here of running into more pick and roll and dribble handoffs. He's playing almost exclusively on the perimeter. But watch this one; they allow him to get so high on the screen. If it's this high above, KCP has to go over, under. Instead, he tries to chase it over, and the delivery pass gets to be above the three-point line. So some of this is just not letting them win the little margins. You see how he jumps out? KCP is going to have to stunt over and go under the screen. That way, the pass there's, there's less room for that pass to go through. And then Michael Porter has to react better. If you watch how late he is on his reaction, here's Michael Porter in help. Way too late. Gives up a dunk and one. You know, he's in a tight spot because he's going to be giving up the corner three, but you got to rotate early and trust your rotations on the backside. But to me, this play is all about not going, not allowing the screen to be that high and go and chase over. Um, it wasn't all bad defense. I thought Bruce Brown on this play was really good. You're going to follow him. He's got, I think, Highsmith he's guarding, and you can see he's locked in. He's just he's on his toes, and he's constantly keeping an eye because he sees the curl coming. So he's on his toes. He anticipates. He gets over and generates a steal. So one reason Bruce is very good at this and also just plays locked in at all times. You can see him reading, staying close to his man, but also reading the play. Denver needs more plays like this. One of the big things about the Nuggets is I thought they overhelped. Since the second half of game one, you're going to watch how far they put the nearest pass. This is one pass away because they're going to send the other guy through. And look at how far uh, KCP is. He's trying to stunt because they don't trust Aaron Gordon one-on-one -on -one for some reason against Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler knows it, takes a one dribble drive over to a shooter, and now KCP has too far to rotate and recover. I think that Denver's going to have to stunt a little bit less on these. Here's Bruce. So worried about the drive. It's Caleb Martin. He's got six points in the series. He's a good player, but Jeff Green has length advantage on him. Look at how far over Bruce goes to stunt. And what do you think the result is? Get the ball to Lowry for an open three. That's how Miami beats you. They don't necessarily beat you with Caleb Martin drives through traffic. Here's Jimmy Butler again. Let's set up our spacing. Look at how far they're luring uh, Jamal Murray over. He comes all the way over to the opposite elbow. Pass comes across, and now the play's broken down. You get a layup. So Denver shooting themselves in the foot, I think, by how much they're worried about these drives when they might just have to trust Aaron Gordon and others to guard Jimmy Butler. Here's Michael Porter. If we watch him, look at where he is. He's guarding right here, but they have him checking out over here. The reason you do this is to prevent drives. Well, the drive wasn't prevented, so now you're just compromised for the kick out. Wide open three, and then we're getting beat. They're going to have to trust their defense, their one-on-one -on -one defense, just a little bit more. And then, um, so if you do trust Aaron Gordon, you know, he's going to have to be better on Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler hasn't had a scoring game. I suspect Denver's going to dare him to score a little bit more. So I think game three is going to be a lot about can Aaron Gordon guard Jimmy Butler. And actions like this, Jimmy Butler just takes his time. Little, oh, got you sleeping. Drives through. Help comes. Wide open three for shooters. Aaron Gordon's going to have to be better about biting on stuff like this. Again, if you see it, the screen's coming. Aaron Gordon reads it late. Glances over. As soon as he glances over to see the screen, 
Jimmy jabs and goes. I mean, Jimmy really keyed in on all the de details and gets a wide open three. Um, Butler's been guarding Jamal Murray, and one of the questions is how to get it op him open. I love this play because it highlights a handful of things. They run an off ball action here, screen the screener, so you get one screen coming across. He's actually open, but look how far Love is sagging off to take away the lane for this. And then you're trying to get Butler off of Murray, but Butler is good at getting through the screen. But more importantly, look at the angle he takes on this closeout. He is facing the sideline because he's not worried about Murray going to the basket. He's counting on the paint protection of Miami. Look how they're stacking the paint. What he's taking away is the pass back to Jokic. When people say turn Jokic into a scorer, I don't think it's as simple as that. I think they're trying to take away the Murray-Jokic two-man game, which is where the ball gets popping and where the team generates assists. So you can see the angle. He's more concerned about the ball going back and forth between Jokic and Murray and more saying, hey, drive into our defenders. You've got one stunt away, so could he pass to Michael Porter? Yes, but there's not great spacing over here on this weak side. You've got uh, Aaron Gordon and the dunker, but they're not so worried about that because they've created a cluster here, and he takes the bait and gets into a jumper. My recommendation, there's things that Denver can do here. Number one, what I would do is I would switch Jokic and Aaron Gordon in this configuration. You're going to lose something out of, if this is Aaron Gordon now in Jokic's spot, you're going to lose something on this screen. Still going to get this action, but now Bam has to play Jokic a little closer or he'll shoot it. This pass might be open now if it's Jokic in the trigger spot instead of Aaron Gordon. But more importantly, as Aaron Gordon comes off the screen, I don't know that's going to be too much different. It'd probably be a little bit less. But what I would do is have Jokic dribble into the dribble handoff here because look at he is trailing the play a little bit. So if it's Aaron Gordon or if it's Jokic, I would have him dribble over into a pitch because then the second screen comes here and you almost force the big to step out on Murray. So I think more strong pin down dribble handoffs, which is a double screen into a dribble handoff, to me that's how you're going to generate the switches early in the shot clock and you can attack from there as it was Jimmy Butler. just He's so <laughs> focused on the game plan that he doesn't care about this shot. Murray can hit him and Murray's going to have to hit him because there's going to be opportunities for him. But if that's the game plan, take away the pass back to Jokic and force him into mid-range contested sidesteps, they'll live with it. I mean, you saw how unbothered Aaron, uh, Jimmy Butler was with that shot. And then the timing on all of these actions needs to just be a little bit better too. Here you get the switch that you want. You got Butler over here. He's going to slide. But you can't be spacing from the corner. They don't care. They're just packing the paint. Aaron Gordon, as soon as you turn the corner on this pick and roll, needs to be diving either behind the defense or screening. And if you do that... When Jimmy Butler stunts over, you have a wide open kick out to the corner. Instead, Aaron Gordon's still standing here. He cuts late, but now Murray is trying to deal with Butler, passes out, gets the ball stolen. He's got to be dialed into the timing. Right now, he should be diving into screen. He should be reading the court, seeing that Jimmy Butler wants to step in and go and screen for this or get behind. As a result, Denver got a little clunky. I also think Denver can try having other players initiate, Bruce Brown namely, but even here KCP. So if you have Jimmy Butler on Murray, use Murray as a decoy. Butler can't play help defense like he just did. He's got a chase. And now you have a pick and roll with KCP handling, and he makes a great read, gets a wide open dunk. Again, Gabe Vinson is not a good defender. It's Jimmy Butler is, so you take him out of the play, run a little side pick and roll. You can see, actually, this is the, fr the fronting action. Yoke's not screening anybody but Bam, so KCP reads it, gets turns the corner, and he's either going to have a layup if Kevin Love doesn't step up, or a lob over the top if he does. I think you can probably trust those guys to handle just a little bit more, but namely Bruce Brown. That's why I think he can play in the series. And then this is the real reason I think Miami, this is one of the things Denver's going to have to really solve. Bam Adebayo on the weak side, they went to this more as the game went along, but I used the first uh, example because I thought it was great. You have an action that's handed here, and Denver's built a wall, okay? Jokic is off of Bam Adebayo because he's not a threat as a scorer from here, and he knows that. So what does he do? As soon as he catches, he dribbles into a pitch because now Jokic has to go from helping the paint to helping the perimeter, and you'll see. Pitch, screen, and now Struess is shooting, and he misses this one, but they did this all fourth quarter. Bam on the weak side, Jokic in the paint, and now he has to like sprint out to be able to be in position. On this one, he wasn't. That contest is nothing and it's a wide open shot. Miami knows they can generate those on reversals. Whenever the ball goes to Bam, it's a quick pitch, and that's hard to guard. Denver has to be better prepared and locked in for it. The real question, and I don't go in this video, is the zone defense. 
Denver's going to have to crack that fourth quarter zone defense, but I think that there is more just about reads and shot making, not letting your rhythm get disrupted. You know, if it becomes an issue in game three, we'll obviously have to make a breakdown of that one. But that's today's list. Go on to game three.